Wow, uh, thank you so much. It's really strange to think I'm a Muslim Zionist working for a Christian Zionist organization. <laughs> oh, it's the best joke of the evening. Um, so, I was thinking, what do I say? You know, Eric made an incredible speech, stole all my lines. So, um, <laughs> um, I didn't want to depress everybody too much because this subject is a little depressing, let's be honest. So, I'm going to briefly um, talk about some relevant issues. So I was an anti-Semite. That made it awkward straight off the bat. Um, <laughs> thankfully I'm not anymore or you've given the reward to a wrong person. Um, <laughs> so I, I used to be an anti-Semite and I was, as, as Frank said. Um, and also I've got to say, Frank, when I was a radical, I really hated you. I really did. So well done. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I, I was radicalized by my community, by the mosque, and Israel was always the focus, Israel and America. And I came across the case for Israel, and that eventually led me to go to Israel. And in short, I fell in love with the country. And when I was coming back, and this was really the key for me, when I was on my way back, I'd spent three weeks in Israel for the first time, really seen the country, seen this vibrant democracy. So what now? Do I go, huh, got it wrong, life goes on? Or do I do what's morally right? Here you have this tiny country, a democracy, a beacon of freedom and hope in a very dark region, which is constantly being vilified, which I was calling for its destruction, which is from the UN to the media, treated like the world's biggest pariah in a world where countries like Pakistan, where my family are from, where you have a woman on death row simply for not renouncing her faith in Christ. Where countries like Saudi Arabia, where the highest religious authority has demanded that churches in the Arab Peninsula should be destroyed. But Israel is the country we're singling out. Israel, the country that whenever another nation cries out in pain because of natural disasters, Israel is there. A country which every day A country who every day has its, its children defending us. Israeli soldiers aren't just defending Israel's borders, they are defending the borders of the free world. So I felt a moral obligation. You know, I give the analogy, if a blind person regains his sight, you don't walk around with your eyes closed. And for that decision, it, I've had to, it's been difficult. I left the UK and moved to Winnipeg. You can see that however you like it, but I, I like Winnipeg. It's, you know. Um, I've had, my family no longer talk to me. They don't agree with what I do. Um, I occasionally get a very poorly spelt death threat. People just don't put in the effort anymore. Um, <laughs> But it's the right thing to do. And look, I said I didn't want to depress everybody, so I proceed to speak for four minutes and depress everyone. Um, here, here's the flip side, though. Honestly, it's been eight years since I first went to Israel. And, you know, th those who bless Israel will be blessed. I truly am. I cannot explain how fortunate I am. If it wasn't for Israel, I could have been in a jihadist training camp somewhere. That was what I wanted to be. Now I work for an incredible organization, Christians United for Israel. Here you have... An organization that, for me, when I was really struggling, a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was really struggling. It's really difficult doing this sometimes. That organization, one lit a fire under me, and reminded me why I do what I do, but also has become my family. So I'm so proud to be part of an amazing organization. And also, you know what? You hear this a lot, and I'm telling you this coming, f I was an Islamist, I was a radical. I can't emphasize this enough. Israel's enemies truly are America's enemies. Those who want to see Israelis dead today will want to see Amer Americans dead tomorrow. And we are dealing, we are dealing with a real Islamist threat. And I've got to say this, you have Shia Iran, you have Sunni ISIS, Islamism is on the march, but you also have Islamists here, as Eric said, but you also have Islamists wearing suits with their Harvard degrees, 
talking in the White House, spreading an evil ideology. And we have to be on guard to that as well. And let me say this loud and clear. <laughs> Criticizing radical Islam, speaking out for the truth, is not Islamophobia. We cannot, we cannot allow free speech to be curtailed. We cannot let the truth be curtailed by this Islamophobia card which is being used to shut down any criticism of radical Islam. And that is how they're going to win. Essentially, when you cannot criticize them, when you cannot challenge them, that is how they will win. So my final message is this. Firstly, this is such an honor. Sarah, you do incredible work. You really are a hero, by the way. I, I have to say that. The, the Israel, the US troops are fighting the battle on the ground, but we're fighting a war of ideas, and you are definitely one of the frontline soldiers. And for that, I thank you. And I just want to finish by saying we can all make a difference. And truly, and I mean this, I, I'm not an overly religious person, which sounds strange coming from somebody working for Kufi. I'm not a Christian either, but hey, you know, I like to mix it up. Um, <laughs> when you stand up for what's right, when you stand up for the truth, when you stand up for Israel, you will see amazing thing happen, things happen in your life. Honestly, from everything which I've gone through, the bad days, how my life is now is so, so amazing. To be free of hatred is incredible. And if it wasn't for Israel, like I said, would I be alive? I don't know. Would I be here today? I don't know. Would I have met my partner who's amazing? No, because she's Israeli and 10 years ago I wanted to kill her, so it would have been, you know. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. Um, but I have to say, without her, this last year would have been impossible. She has been a constant support. And you know, there was a UN report which said that women in Israel are the most oppressed anywhere. <laughs> Believe me, they're not, OK? I have an Israeli girlfriend. If they're, I'm oppressed, trust me. I, even I'm starting to consider the idea of Muslims being oppressed by Jews after dating her, you know? <laughs> I'm kidding. Israel's an amazing place. Thank you so much for being here. God bless America. I'm Israel Chai.